you know, there have been a lot of people who have asked us, you know, why did we even get into pedals in the first place? And so, and it really came down to, there were so many guitar players that work here at uh, BB and GNL, we just started asking ourselves, well, what really excites us in the whole pedal market? And, I mean, it didn't take long. Everybody starts throwing in their ideas. Well, you know, I really like the, the fuzz bass or, you know, Waz. Uh, for me, it was uh, the Univibe. A huge uh, f fan of the Univibe, you know, grow up listening to Robin Trower, you know, trying to emulate that. And then, uh, we actually went on eBay and just started buying a bunch of these old Univibes. You know, you're paying a fortune for them. Drop $1,500 on one, it comes in, it doesn't even work well. So I had to repair it first before I could play with it. But, you know, and then we're buying other people's versions of these and just listening to them go, what is it about these Univibes that just sounds so magical? You know, and you're looking at these little optical devices in there, and it's really hard to recreate some of the old optical you know, cans that these guys have, the big old incandescent bulbs in there and the photo cells. I started looking at different ways of using some optical sensors and things. And so we just started toying around with, uh, you know, what sounded really good here. And so, like I said, there's enough guitar players around here. We're able to just pull people in and go, well, play this thing. Compare it against a real Univibe. Compare it against these other units here. What are you hearing? And he goes, well, you know, it needs to be a little bit more swooshy and all these you know, really musician type terms, you know, more full and more girthy and more uh, round and tuby and Rubenesque over here. And you're hearing these terms and, and being a guitar player too, okay, okay I, I understand what you're saying, now I've got to translate that into a circuit. And uh, boy, just trial and error, circuit after circuit, just trying a bunch of different things. And eventually we ended up with what, quite frankly, I think is just a very, very nice, effective uh, tool that recreates that uni vibe vibe, if you will. Uh, and we've actually had a lot of people try it. We send it out for evaluations. The response is the same. But this is just really a very wonderful sounding uni vibe type pedal. And we're very excited about this. Um, you know, finding the optical devices was, was kind of interesting too because you've got so many to choose from. We could just take a bunch of photo cells, slap them around in a circle, stick a light in the middle and try to recreate it. But some of the circuitry that's available to use nowadays uh, really lends itself a little bit better to using tighter tolerance parts, uh, optical sensors that you know you're going to buy them, they're going to always work the same way. Really had the uh, horrible misfortune of getting a couple of uh, real uni vibes at about a grand a pop and they just didn't sound very good. Uh, they, you know, some of the cells weren't working right, uh, you know, the lamp was a little bit goofy and it's it's really frustrating. You drop that kind of money for something, you just always want it to sound great. So kind of the goal for us here as we were creating these pedals was we want to have that vibe repeatable. You want to be able to open up the, the soul vibe, take it out of the box, throw it on the floor, you play it. That's what you got. It sounds magical every time. Your buddy buys one, it sounds magical. You don't end up having to Come back from the store, drop the thing in the pedal, or drop the thing in your little pedal board, and fire it up. And you go, man, that's just not what I remember those things sounding like. So, if a person fires this guy up on their system and, and puts a smile on their face, then then we've done our job. You know, there's another issue that came up when we started buying all these pedals off of eBay, is that some of them didn't work, or they didn't work uh, correctly, uh, and and that kind of bothered me. I'm thinking, uh, you know, what can I do to make the circuitry reliable? So we pulled in uh, military grade circuit boards. We're using extra thick copper traces on it, making large traces, a lot of space between them. Unfortunately, it takes up a lot of room inside the box. Uh, that makes you have to stamp some components up. But the benefit of that is, is you've got a really sturdy circuit board. All the parts or, you know, they're going to be accurate, they're going to stay on the board, you're not going to have the things, you know, tearing off. I found so many of these circuit boards where the foil had just ripped off, the parts were sticking up in the air. I go, no, 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 we, we've got to make these things uh, rock solid. I want the components 1% tolerance on the resistors. You want to have the polyester caps that are 100 volt ratings on them. You want to make sure that those things are soldered tight on the circuit board and that circuit board is locked into the box. Nothing's moving, uh, nothing's coming off. And, uh, and that makes me feel better. And um, the service department that we have are actually is run by one person. 
uh, and for the number of products we have, that pretty much lets you know that we take very seriously uh, the quality of the things that we make. We do not want our products to ever fail out in the field. Uh, you wouldn't like it. We don't like it either. You know, we spent so much time uh, on this circuitry for this uh, Soul Vibe. Uh, we would build up these little vector boards like this and uh, sit around in our performance area out in the warehouse, bring guitar players in, and you know, I'd be there with my soldering iron, a big bag of parts, and we'd build up a board, and uh, well, they didn't like this sound, so we would tweak this, put in this part here. No, it needs to be a little bit more round sounding here. And, okay, usually a little bit more low frequency coming through. Notches on it aren't in the right spot. Okay, we'll move the filters a little bit here. I'll make up another card here. Well, that's not working. Well, let's try here, but maybe something different. Let's add another control. Uh, we went around and around for, uh, boy, the better part of uh, four or five months just struggling with these circuits. Just go, and it, it could be, you know, going back and forth between a couple of filter points. And it's like, well, this board isn't working here. Let's go back to this one. Let's try this and just use trim pots. And let's try to figure out where that filter needs to be so that it sounds like the one Univibe that we got that just is magical. We went back and forth for, like I said, just four or five months. It was, it was very tedious. But at the end of it, what you have is a whole room full of guitar players that are standing around, you know, an ugly looking vector board that says, uh, that's the magic. That's it. Now, put that on a circuit board and get it into the pedal here. And when we got to this stage here, a little bit of minor tweaking and, uh, boy, a very, very exciting ending to a long process. Ended up in the Soul Vibe.